So good morning to you all. Morning. It's lovely to, to see you and those of you who are online. And for those that don't know me are new here today, my name's Grace and I'll be leading the service along with the, the rest of the band. And uh, Phil will come along later on to, to share the word. So is everybody feeling certain today? You know what's happening? <laughs> Who's our Prime Minister? Come on, who can tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up from, <laughs> from Chris over there. So I guess when it, we're in this uncertain time, and these things do happen, but it's a, a really good time to remember that uh, in uncertainty, and we all pass through it in our personal lives as well, um, that he is still God and he's on track. He has our backs, so we can rejoice in that. So I'd like to read from Psalm 23, who, you know, which we all probably are aware of, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths bring in honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And that's God's word, and it hasn't changed. Let's pray. So, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this new day. It's the day that you've made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. Father God, bless our time of worship today. And as we enter the worship, we take authority over every distraction and every oppression of the enemy. Lord, we pray that you would satisfy those of us that come for help today and those who desire to know you better. Father God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in and through us today. Increase our understanding of your word and direction. Help us never to feel condemned, but to know that we are free because of the finished work of Christ. Let this be a time of cleansing, refreshing, and renewal by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Amen. So we're going to enter a time of worship right now. Please stand with me if you can.
Okay, um, just to give you a couple of notices today and um, just one other slide I wanted to share with you. So we have a stay and play. I think you might have seen these leaflets around the, uh, the coffee area. And um, that starts, well, it's only on Wednesday the 26th because we have half term. And it starts at 10 o'clock till 11.45. So... You are welcome to bring your children under the age of 11 or 11 and under. Also, the, the cafe will be open, so, you know, get your teas and coffees or anything else you want, nice cakes. Um, yes, I'm plugging the coffee shop. <laughs> Homemade cakes. All right, so these, um, the next thing I wanted to mention to you, I don't know if we have the um, PowerPoint. Oh, he's uh, Phil's over there. So... I just wanted to um, mention that we have Black History Month um, and it's the finale on the 29th of um, um, October, this Saturday coming. So you're welcome to attend. And then we have Family Light Night here on the 30th, Sunday the 30th. So instead of going into all the, the Halloween stuff, we prefer to declare the light. Um, because Jesus is the light. And so that will happen from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And Emma says a big thank you to everyone who gave jam jars and thanks to everyone who's offered to help. It's much appreciated. And um, apparently quite a lot of people have booked. There are about 100 people. So really um, impressive. And we thank God for that, that we can talk about the, the good things of God um, within this season. So if, you, if you're not able to come, do pray for the event, that it goes really well. So thank you very much for that. So uh, here I have my pride and joy at the moment. We did tie-dyeing at... Um, I know for all you technical, you um, people that do make clothes and all that fancy stuff, yes, okay, don't judge me. But um, um, we made this tie-dye out and it was amazing. It was my first time, so I'm just showing it to everybody. <laughs> so it was a real wonderful thing, event that we had, Black History Month. Um, we had the Royal Society of Arts come and they... Um, they gave us a, an artist, and we had local artists. We did pottery, tie-dye, creative writing, and all the rest of it. So that was great fun. Then I just wanted to in, just um, talk about a couple of books that um, I found out about on um, Sunday, last Sunday, by 
um, two eight-year-olds who've written, I hope I'm two, they've written this uh, book each, and um, they published, which was so exciting. And the great thing about it when you read these books, it's about, they're both about friendship, and they're about, well, one's about money matter, matters and sharing wealth. And it's all sort of based on kindness. And I thought, wow, for two eight-year-olds, usually at that age, they just want to hog everything for themselves. But, uh, well, I was a bit like that. Okay, I'm sure the eight-year-olds here are great. So, um, so I just wanted to um, encourage them. And I, I probably get a copy for the children's church here because I just think it's encouraging that young people are doing this at such an early age. Um, so we thank God for, for that. So those are the, the notices I wanted to, to bring to you. I don't think there's anything else. If there is, please shout, Phil. No? All right, thank you. So, <laughs> so we'll carry on um, with a, a song that I want to, to share with you. If you know it, you're welcome to, to join. If you 
can. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. We give God the glory. Wonderful. So um, we have Bolo who's going to give the prayers right now. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for yesterday. We thank you, Lord, for our future. We thank you, Lord, for knowing you, Jesus. Because without you, we can't do anything. We have faith in you, and you give us assurance. And as we pray today, Lord, we put our all before you. No matter our circumstances, oh Lord, we have hope in you, Lord. Our hope is found in you. We thank you, Lord, for knowing you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, protection, and guidance, and for being able to rely on you as our great helper, because there is nothing that is difficult for you to do. We need your help for our country, the United Kingdom. We pray for more certainty. We pray against anxiety. We pray that you create assurance and economic stability. And as some people continue to face challenges, we pray for your continued provision for families, especially those that are finding it tough to make ends meet due to inflation increases and increased energy prices. And we pray for the decision that will be made on Friday, that Lord, the best person will be in the post. We just pray for your intervention, O oh Lord because there is nothing that is difficult for you to do. We pray for other countries that are currently facing similar challenges, that the Lord takes control. I'm using this opportunity to pray for peace between Russia and Ukraine. We know your hand is in this, because we know it could be worse. We know things are, are getting worse every day, but we know that the Lord is always in control. And we pray that there will be a day that would say there is light at the end of the tunnel. And also pray, we also pray for the resolution of the unrest in Iran, and also for peace and reconciliation between Utopia and Eritrea. I pray that the Lord should take control of the floods in Nigeria that happens every year, with some, time, with some towns being completely submerged in water, causing deaths and pray that the root cause shall be looked into, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank, you we, we thank you for taking us through the fruits of the Spirit, which comes from the Spirit of God. We pray today for the spirit of kindness, that we are able to show acts of kindness with a sincere heart. We also pray that we can be kind and compassionate to one another, to our families, and all those that we come into contact with. Teach, teach us how to do this, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. As in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 5 says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no wrong. May the Lord continue to teach us the act of kindness, that we can do this and carry this out with our families, with our church community, and with, our, with, with those that we come into contact with on a daily basis. We pray for divine intervention for the following people. Those people that are ill that need your touch, for the people that I'm going to mention, and also for others. I would mention Sheila Francis. I would mention Daphne Adams. I would mention um, Trish Cox. 
I would mention Ashley Frost and many others. When we're weak, oh Lord, we pray that you make us strong. Whatever circumstances we feel we find ourselves in, we pray against fear, that anxiety that creates depression. We pray against it that you take control, Lord, because there is none like you. We pray for continued healing and divine protection, and most especially the closer relationship with God through your Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, our God, as we we, we, we meet together today to um, go through the world with Phil. We pray that, Lord, you speak to us through Phil. We speak, you speak to us through your word in Jesus' mighty name. Let this week be, bring us continued grace, favor, mercy, and guidance from you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. So before Phil comes to bring the word, we're going to sing a couple more songs in worship, continued worship. So please join me and stand if you can. And we know that it's really talking about what the first one is talking about, what a mighty God he is that we serve. And the second one is about the power of the blood, the blood of Jesus that was shed for us, remembering that it was shed for us, it's done, it's finished. So whenever you feel condemned or you feel there's no going forward or whatever, just remember that the blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf. So be encouraged. Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power 
are in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Oh, of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Woo! Praise the Lord. Oh, you look like you want to sing. Want to carry on singing? I was. You're welcome. Please sit down. Thank you so much. Yeah, Phil's coming up to uh, give his word. Morning. I've left me clicker down here, sorry. <laughs> sorry, left me buttons down on my seat. So we're continuing this morning in the series uh, called The Spirit Renews, looking at the fruits of the Spirit. And so far we've looked at love, joy, peace and patience, which means this morning... Kindness, excellent. Some of you were listening. When Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, he's talking about the character of God. And he's teaching his readers, us, as well as the Galatian people that he wrote to originally, about one of the most important works of the Holy Spirit, growing the character of God in us. Which is incredible when we pause to think about it, isn't it? God is absolutely perfect. He is holy. He is incredible. He can do anything. And his character can grow in us. Isn't that amazing? Three of you think it's amazing. It's great. <laughs> so last week, if we looked at patience, if that was what kind of, you know, you get different uh, fruit. If that was like a tough fruit, maybe a, you know, an apple, maybe a cooking apple. They're a bit hard, aren't they? then kindness is like a tender one. And these two fruits, patience and kindness, are something of a pair in some ways. They complement each other, they go together. Both of them are essential qualities of love, aren't they? We've already heard uh, the words of 1 Corinthians 13. Bola didn't know that I was going to include this in the talk as well. Love is patient. Love is kind. When we love someone, we find it easier, or at least a little bit less difficult, to be patient with them, don't we? Oh, not so convinced about that one. Okay, maybe I got that bit wrong. And being kind to other people is one of the most noticeable characteristics of a genuinely loving person. A dictionary describes kindness as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. But I think that kindness is so much more than that as well. It involves being thoughtful for others more than for ourselves in any given situation. Which can be tricky, can't it? To be kind to someone, I need to put myself in their position and consider what they would most want and then do it for them. Kindness seems very close to what Jesus meant when he said, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. And it can be as simple as a pleasant word or a caring smile, but it can also be something much more than that and more costly. Most importantly, being kind means being willing to do something, something that helps somebody else even if it might be inconvenient for me or costly. Kindness goes beyond duty. It means doing something you don't have to do, but that you choose to do. 
Kindness goes beyond duty. And kindness goes beyond reward. It means doing something you don't get paid for. Shock. Horror. It means often it it might cost you something. Not necessarily money, but maybe. And it doesn't expect any kind of repayment or reward. You could say that kindness is its own reward. Let's think for a few minutes about the kindness of God. In the Old Testament, there is this wonderful word, chesed. We're all going to try and say this together after three. You have to get the ch at the beginning, okay? Chesed. One, two, three. Chesed. Okay, now clean the saliva from the back of the head of the person. No, I'm joking. It's a lovely word. It's an old uh, word from the Old Testament in Hebrew. And it's one of these Hebrew words that can be translated in several different ways. It could be love or faithful love. God is faithful in his love for us. This is all talking, this word describes God and his kindness to us. Could be translated loyalty. God is loyal to his people because of the covenant relationship he has with us. He's committed, completely committed to that relationship. Could be translated mercy. God constantly exercises mercy towards his people. It's close to compassion. And then loving kindness. It's one of those lovely old English words that has kind of gone out of fashion, kind of double word, loving kindness. It carries the active sense of doing something on behalf of another person, something which shows thoughtful love in action. So when God acts in kindness, or chesed, it means God is being faithful to his covenant promises paying careful attention to our needs, acting in generous and merciful love, generously providing everything for our blessing and benefit. I told you it was a beautiful word, didn't I? One of the most well-known uses of this word in the Old Testament is found in Psalm 23, and Grace didn't know I was going to refer to Psalm 23 this morning. It's amazing that God, it seems, has been at work drawing things together. David is thinking of God as a, as a faithful shepherd, as a good shepherd, who is committed to caring for his sheep, even at his own cost or expense. And he says, surely your goodness or love, chesed, will follow me all the days of my life. Another well-known example is in Psalm 136, where the word chesed is repeated at the end of every line. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, And we all join in to say, his love endures forever. This whole psalm celebrates how God has always acted with trustworthy love. Even when he's acted in judgment, he's loving us. Throughout the Bible, we see countless examples of this kindness of God. It's a part of who God is. God is kind. And therefore it should be part of who we are as God's people. If this is part of the character of God, then this should be growing in us as the fruit of the Spirit grows. We think of uh, examples in the Bible where people express kindness, the kindness of God to one another. Think of the story of Ruth. Ruth shows wonderful kindness, doesn't she, to Naomi. And Boaz shows wonderful kindness to Ruth and Naomi. We can think of the friendship between David and Jonathan. They show kindness to one another. And it's a kindness which even extends uh, beyond uh, Jonathan, Jonathan's own life. After he dies, David shows kindness to Jonathan's family after he's long gone. So if kindness is essentially loving others enough to put their needs before our own, then once again we find it in Jesus. Jesus is our supreme example, the ultimate example of kindness. He is kindness kindness incarnate. Kindness on two legs, if you like. Just think for a few moments how Jesus handled interruptions. I find this really challenging. He was eating a meal or traveling from A to B. He was in the middle of teaching or sharing some quiet moments with his closest friends. And along comes someone. 
someone with a need or some kind of problem. How does Jesus react in those problems? He's kind. He stops what he's eating. He stops his sermon. He doesn't tell them to go away. He doesn't ignore their need. He, does, uh, he doesn't ask them to come back later. He doesn't say, I haven't got time now. Jesus is kind. He loves those people. He changes his plans. Stops what he's doing to show them loving kindness. Think of the woman with bleeding who interrupted Jesus. He was on his way to a medical emergency. And he stopped when she touched his, his clothes and, and he felt the power drain from him, is what the Bible says. He stopped. And he showed her loving kindness. Or think of the parents wanting to bring their children to be blessed by this wonderful rabbi. Jesus is in the middle of some important teaching with his disciples, but he stops. Let the children come to me. Think of the friends of the paralyzed man. Breaking a hole in the roof. Jesus is halfway through his sermon. I'm just checking. <laughs> Breaking a hole in the roof so they can lower their friends down. Jesus doesn't rebuke them. I always wonder about the owner of the house, what on earth they thought about their roof being busted open. But anyway, Jesus shows kindness to the man. He heals the man, forgives his sins, pick up your mat, go home. <laughs> Jesus was willing to be interrupted. He always acted with kindness towards those in need and he, when they broke into his plans. Even when he is in excruciating pain, hanging on the cross, he shows kindness towards his mother, making sure that she'll be looked after after he's gone. He shows kindness to the, to the criminal hanging on the cross next to him. Today you'll be in paradise. I'm challenged by this, aren't you? Does this describe me? Far too often, no, it doesn't. Are we more often so self-obsessed or too busy to be kind? Jesus had the most important mission in all of history. Jesus was busier than I will ever be. Jesus had more people clamouring for his attention than I will ever know, and yet he took time to be kind. Lord, please, may we learn from the example of Jesus. Please fill us with your kindness and help us to share it out with those around us. Amen. This sort of kindness doesn't come naturally. Well, at least it doesn't to me. Maybe it does to you, but I would find it takes some work. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It requires cultivation. It grows in us. We have to ask God to make it grow. Ask God, please, Lord, make me more kind. What a wonderful prayer that is, isn't it? Have you ever prayed that prayer? I'd encourage you, just pray that prayer every day this week. Please, Lord, make me more kind. And we have to practice being kind. This is where we add our work to that which God is doing in us. Practice it and go on practicing it until it becomes a habit. Until being kind is our reflex. Until it becomes more natural for us to say and do what is kind than not to. Who can I thank today at home or in the shops or at work or while travelling? Where can I give a smile or a word of appreciation, for example, to those who clean the streets? What will I do if I meet someone in need? Am I prepared in advance to try to help if I can? Have I got some money or some food or something ready to give? Who can I show the kindness of the Lord to this week? Paul picks up on the example of Jesus and uh, he, he teaches some really challenging things in Colossians 3. He, he writes these words, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Verse 17. 
And then in verse 23, he says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. So first of all, verse 17, whatever you do, whether in word or dude, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. First of all, whatever you do, that's everything, okay? That, that covers everything, all of our lives, every moment, uh, everything we do and say. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. What that means, what Paul is teaching there, is that it means to do something that Jesus would do if he were here present in that situation. Or to say what Jesus would say if he were present in that situation. Does that make sense? That's what Paul means by do it in the name of the Lord. It means I'm acting as though Jesus himself were acting in and through me. So the question we're asking is, what would Jesus do? Do you remember those wristbands and, and the t-shirts and all of that craze? Do you remember those days? Wonderful question. What would Jesus do? And therefore, what should I be doing? What should I be saying? Since I should be acting in the name of Jesus. And in verse 23, it says, whatever you do, again, that's everything, work at it with all your hearts as working for the Lord. So the first one means acting as if I were Jesus. The second one means acting as if the other person was Jesus. Do you see that? Whatever I do or say to that other person, I'm doing and saying it to Jesus. So the question we're asking here is, if that person were Jesus, what would I do for him or her? How would I behave right now? If that were Jesus right in front of me. What an incredible difference I think this would make to my week if I could think like this in those two ways at every moment. Don't you think? I think that would transform my week. If I think about how I respond to people as if I am Jesus responding, how would Jesus respond? If I think about that person that I'm responding to as if they were Jesus, how would that change the way that I respond? I think it would make a huge difference to my life, and I'm challenged. Richard von Brand was a, a Romanian pastor who was imprisoned and tortured under the communist regime. He tells of one day when he went back to his cell and there were some other people there along with him. He'd been tortured that very day. And it was freezing cold and he was hugging his only blanket for warmth. And then he saw another prisoner shivering in the cold in the corner without a blanket. And he held his blanket to him even more tightly. Can you relate to those feelings? Sometimes we see people in need and, and what we think is, I want to just make sure I'm all right. <laughs> and then he thought of the question, the question came to his mind. If that other prisoner were Jesus, would I give him my blanket? The question answered itself. He gave the man his blanket and after he was freed, he wrote a book with that title. If that were Christ, would you give him your blanket? This quality of kindness is not only what it means to be Christ-like, it's also deeply attractive to people. Just think about it. Would you rather spend some time with someone who is kind or with someone who is self-absorbed and mean? It's a pretty stupid question to ask, isn't it? <laughs> kindness is attractive. As we are kind, people are drawn to us. And if we're showing Christ-like kindness, then actually who they're drawn to is not us, but Christ. So as this fruit grows in our lives, as we are kind as Christ is kind, so people will be attracted to Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? You see how incredible this plan of God is that he's chosen to make all of us like Jesus so that loads more people can know Jesus. Isn't that amazing? What a fantastic opportunity we have this week to be kind to people so that they'll be drawn to Jesus. 
That's not the reason why we're kind. We're kind because it's the character of God growing in us. But it's an outworking. It's what happens as we, as we live out the character of God in our everyday lives. <coughs> May this kindness grow in our lives more and more. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, God, uh, for who you are and for growing your character in our lives. Lord, we ask now in Jesus' name, would you come and fill us with your Spirit and grow this fruit of kindness in our lives. Lord, this week, would you help us to ask those questions to respond to people thinking, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say in this situation? And to think of those people as Jesus. And would we see that transform our responses? Would, you, would we see that growing kindness in our characters? When people wind us up, Lord, help us to be kind. When people interrupt us, Lord, help us to be kind. When we see the needs of folk around us, Lord, help us to be kind. Thank you, God, for your incredible kindness to us in Jesus. Help us to show that same kindness to those around us. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that word, um, Phil. Um, before we stand up to, to sing our next uh, song, I just noticed that I was looking at Rachel and Tom. I'm thinking they've, got <laughs> they've brought the new family member with them and we just want to celebrate with you. Congratulations. I don't know the, your baby's name. Sophie. 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 So just a quick round of applause. Congrats. Welcome. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to stand up and, and sing. Everyone needs compassion, mighty to save. Please join me, or join us, I should say. Compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the 
There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Father God, help us to sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters to be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Mm. Lord, not to repay evil for evil or talk behind each other's backs. Help us in your strength to speak your truth 
and live it, to search for peace and work to maintain it, to be a light that brings hope and comfort wherever we are. Only in your strength we can do this. Now let us share the grace together and look each other in the eye. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a wonderful and peaceful week. God bless you.